And welcome to another episode of Down in the Blocks with Chris Young. We're we're doubling down on these things. There's, this is too much fun, uh, and you got too much uh, too good of a basketball team not to to take uh, an inv- you know take an opportunity to talk about this incredible run they're on. Um, they are such a multiple dimensional team, such an unselfish team. We're going to bring in Chris Young here, the former Wolverine the pivot man who's been beaming ear to ear all season long. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he's um, delaying family yeah. trips up North until the game is over. That kind yeah. of stuff. Um, hey, he's I, committed. <laughs> I, I do have to tell you though, Tom, you're killing me with the, the, the fanboy comment last week. I caught more flack about that. comment. <laughs> I, everybody that knows me knows I'm not a fanboy, And you said it, I I it. Think about the things I was saying. I was like, Oh man, I got to, I got to kind of change course well, a little bit, you know? That's why I did that. I did. You had to piss yeah. you off. Otherwise, it's not no, any it fun. Worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah, a lot of messages about that, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Um, there, there's there's a lot of fanboys out there for this Michigan basketball team. I, um, I, I mean, I, I thought, you know, you and I talked about this, Chris, uh, our last podcast. You know, we were going, oh, God, this is that sandwich game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and. You know, they they just they just defy those kind of games. They just they they're just so united, and they're yeah. the, the, the the balance on this team is uncanny. I yeah. looked at the scoring averages on this. It was 13-3, You know, nine, eight, seven. You know, it, yeah. it's just they're, they're, pick your poison. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There, there's no, it's not a two dimensional team like Illinois is <clears throat> pretty much that we'll talk about in a little bit, but. Yeah. Um, Okay, your takeaway from IU. Let her rip there, Chris. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been saying, especially the last couple of weeks about this team, is that you're going to get the business from somebody. It, it, and it, and you never really know who it is. Yeah. You never know if it's going to be Hunter Dickinson's going to go for 25, or it's going to be Isaiah Livers that goes for 25, or Franz Wagner that goes for 25. But you're getting the business from at least one guy in the 20s, and then you're getting the business from a couple other guys in the high teens, and then everybody else is kicking in 8, mm-hmm. 10, 12 points. You can't defend it. And if you take a couple yeah. of those guys away, somebody else steps up. And it just yeah. there's such a balance. There's such a, <clears throat> a good understanding of what your role is on this team. And, you know, everybody's really stepped into their role. You know, Johnny Brown has not played great as of late. He's missed a couple, you know, wide open shots, things that he would normally make. But I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. And he's going to get his rhythm back. And, you know, he's not going to go one for seven again. And it's going to well, be one, thing, uh, he's got 20. And it's like, well, how do you even yeah. scout? How do you prepare right. for a team like that? That just at any moment, anybody can drop 20 on you. Well, what happened, you know, like Shawnee and, and Isaiah talked about this after the game. And this is where I really pick up, you know, as far as where the, where, where this dynamics is and where, 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 where's the, where, where's the core base of all this team unity and everything. And they, they're pretty forthcoming when they talk about it, when, you know, Isaiah Livers, talked about Shawnee Brown, you know, I mean, he said, you know, Shawnee didn't have his best game. You know, he's being diplomatic about it. And he, he had, he had a one three in the corner there. That was a nice yeah. shot. He yep. said, I'm not, he was just jacked after the game. He was giddy after the game. Mm-hmm. It's like, nobody gives a shit if they have yeah. a bad game. All they care about is the team. And yeah. I have never seen a team more unselfish uh, in, in terms of ball distribution, court awareness where everybody is, the high ball screens, everybody knows where everybody is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that, you know, the camaraderie and the sidelines, if you're out, mm-hmm. you're still engaged. I mean, that's off the scale. Uh, having two grad seniors come in like Mike Smith and Shawnee, and mm-hmm. they're accepted as leaders yep. along with Livers and, and Eli. I mean, have you seen anything like this in all no. the years you've played basketball uh, and followed Michigan? I've, I've never seen anything like this on Michigan's teams. I mean, and you got to go back to, you know, the time that I played in before where you get teams that are loaded down with seniors, where you've got yeah. four seniors starting and the, the fifth guy's been starting since he was a freshman, but he's a junior and a couple guys coming off the bench that have been around and everyone's bought in. It kind of reminds me of those, some of those Duke teams from the late nineties and early two thousands and the North yes. Carolina from before then that you just had these group of guys and, you, you knew Leitner was going to kill you, but then all of a sudden this guy, this guy, and this guy steps up. You know, it's just – that's the type of team this is. And, and you're really starting to feel that that magic around the team where, you know, not to be on Charlie Brown too much, but offensively he did not have a great game. But right. defensively he was still dialed in. He was still playing Absolutely. defense as hard as he possibly could. Like there it, there wasn't even a factor. A lot of guys they miss a couple shots, man. Their heads are down and they're just like, ah, oh, they're playing, but they're not really – 
getting after it. But I mean, there's none of that on this team. They're, right. they're celebrating when their their teammates make a play or make a shot <clears throat> as much as they they would if they made it. Right. Well, um, I think that I'm going to talk about the leadership. I want to get your opinion. No. They may, they might be up by ten and half or eight or something like this. But all of a sudden, it goes to like sixteen, at about the fifteen or sixteen minute mark of the game. Uh, yeah. We're left in the game, yep. and that's when Isaiah said, "That's when we come over under that under sixteen timeout, and we look at each other, and we you know we basically tell each other we're we're not taking a you know the foot off the accelerator here. I mean, yeah. they are challenging themselves." To mm -hmm. not get lackadaisical and start looking at the big lead, and yeah. that shows because I've seen you know, and I've seen it defensively how mm -hmm. locked in they are even when they get the big lead. You see the same things? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that all teams talk about when you go into halftime of the lead is like, okay, we got to keep going, we got to keep going, and we have to know that they're going to come out punching, and you have to take their heart right away. And this team does an right. amazing job. And I don't know if it's every game, but it's close to every game coming out of the second half. They run a play to get the ball inside to Hunter Dickinson. They try and establish that that yeah. inside presence yeah. right away, as opposed to working it around and shooting a three at the end of the shot clock or something like that. It's it goes into Hunter Dickinson or someone's attacking the basket. It's always attacking. It's never just settling for you know a fifteen foot fadeaway. And that's how you immediately step on someone's throat and you take their heart coming right out of the gate. And if you go on a little bit of run. And you get to that under 16 timeout, and then you're still challenging each other, and you're looking at each other like, man, we got this. Let's go. Like, we're got we're up 16 now. Let's put this to 25 and put this away. If, if the players are doing that without the coaches, like, okay, guys, this is what we should do, and kind of you know, right. push that, that's a special, special group that can that's got that type of mentality. And and that's well, what we have. That's that's absolutely the team that we've got. Yeah, and I'm thinking you're also getting a, a special performance out of the coaching staff. I mean, I'm seeing, um, and this goes, <laughs> this goes way back. I mean, Michigan used to when Johnny Orr was there um, mm -hmm. a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, when I was in school a long time ago, uh, <laughs> they would always uh, put up a three quarter or sometimes even a four quarter zone press after made free throws. That mm -hmm. was like the hallmark. Okay, yeah. to discombobulate. Very, very, yep. At uh, Michigan, I mean, you know, against Indiana, th they do things. So like, where'd that come from? And where'd that come from? I mean, it's yeah. like, it's like this big mix of music. They're coming. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden he throws that out and Michigan and Indiana got way out of, they got, they got in a funk yeah. with a shot clock, mm -hmm. uh, based on that zone. That uh, it was like a three quarter press. Yeah. And that, that he, he's just, uh, that, that coaching staff is coming up with all these different wrinkles Mm -hmm. for the other team to think about when they look at film, I think of oh, when, I, when I think of that Michigan team. Absolutely. But that's a, that's a tribute to the coaching staff, but it's also their trust in the players that they've got the mental ability to know that after a made free throw, we're going into three quarter court trap. And then after two passes, when the ball gets over half court, then we're falling back into a zone or we're picking up man or we're doing this, we're doing that. It's having the, the ability to make those adjustments and make those changes on the fly. But that three quarter court press that they were putting on, I mean, Franz Wagner at the top of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking he's, about. He's, he's, his own, he's his own press right there. Yeah. I mean, some of the steals he comes up with and just how long he is and how he disrupts just that, which is normally a nice, easy guard to guard pass or a guard to a big coming up in the middle of the of the court to break that zone. He right. just disrupts everything. He just he's so long and so athletic. He can take all that away. And, you know, teams haven't found an answer for it. And I don't honestly know that there is an answer for it. The only thing that can slow him down in that um in that press is himself because uh, yeah. there's no there's no offense that can just go right past him that just doesn't happen it's it's uh it's an amazing thing to watch what he is capable of doing on the defensive end you know um the length of michigan i mean with shawnee and 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 france and and then livers people think i mean livers is six nine 240 or i mean this guy is a big dude oh uh, I mean, uh, yeah he's like six four like six five he's not six nine but yeah he's a, he's a big dude oh but no he, livers is six no he he's he's not six five no he, he's well six, he's not nine. six nine he's, six, eight, six, nine. he's not six nine but um you know he kind of lost in the shuffle because you got seven well, one and you got then you got franz wagner who's six nine six ten out there 
you know, and then if you put Brandon Johns out there or you put Austin Davis out there, he kind of looks like one of the little guys, but you know, he's six, five, six, six for sure. So you, you got to tell why rot then to not stretch that in the, in the press guide then, which they often do in intercollegiate athletics. Just a little bit, just a little bit, but he would, <laughs> no matter how many times I asked Tom, he would never put me in the media guide at seven foot. As many times as I asked him, I could never get over that. that <laughs> well, the, uh, he, he's big. He's a big dude. He's chiseled. Yeah. And, and then, and then, and then Mike Smith, what he brings. Um, and then once again, they talked about team dynamics when Mike Smith came on board, um, mm -hmm. In the sum, I mean, it was like this instant engagement with his team, and there's a lot of luck involved in this too. You know okay. what I mean? Yep. I mean that that I mean, Juwan got lucky as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, luck is where preparation meets opportunity, right? You know, that's Absolutely. the old saying. Absolutely. Um, and and you know, he did his research on these kids, mm -hmm. and he you know he he there's some gambling aspects to it to you know to wreck the team dynamics, but yeah. it's just. It, it's just working out perfect right now. So now we're sitting here on Monday night, still savoring this win over Indiana. But you know how the schedule goes. Here comes Illinois. Io DeSumo, we do not know if he's going to play or not. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless if he plays uh, or or doesn't play, I think Michigan has got to you know got to be ready for this game. But yep. Brad Underwood comes out and does this bitch fest about the fact that uh, Michigan shouldn't be winning the Big Ten champion. Yeah, because they've dodged all these games. Now, I've liked Brad Underwood yeah. uh, ever since he was at Oklahoma State. I saw him in a post-game mm -hmm. presser after uh, Michigan beat Oklahoma State down in Indy. I thought, yeah. wow, that guy is that guy is classy, okay? Mm -hmm. He yeah. goes to Illinois. Same thing. After post-game pressers, he's very complimentary. Now he's just, just being a horse is behind right now. Is he doing yeah. that to fire up his team, and will it backfire and fire up Michigan? Well, you know, to, to talk about what a lot of the coaches have been doing around the Big Ten for the last couple of weeks in their post press conferences has just been something I haven't seen ever. You know, they're they're coming out there and they're ripping the other team. They're ripping the referees. They're doing this and that and making excuses. It's like just come out and congratulate the other team and talk about the things you got to do to get better. Don't talk about what the other team should have done or shouldn't have done and all that. I, I'm really surprised that, you know, Brad Underwood came out and said anything about Michigan. Because why isn't he worried about his team instead of worrying about what Michigan's doing? Win more games and you right. can win the Big Ten uh, tournament or the Big Ten title outright. Don't right. worry about. Well, I, think it, I, you know? I think it's a I think it's a mistake because I, it's I, I think it's a mistake because you know Michigan's good enough where they could probably come into this game tomorrow night and win it. But it's just like you know I, I was just rewatching the Last Dance and you know Michael Jordan needed a little bit of an incentive just to get that much more dialed in. Michigan's going to use this as just that little bit more incentive. It's going to be hanging up in the locker room that Michigan doesn't deserve this and blah, 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 blah. And now we've got the chance to beat Illinois and to win the Big Ten regular season outright against them. Well, I mean, let me ask you, let me ask you this question as a as a former player. And and you were a physical player, uh, you were a front line player down in the blocks. I mean, you know, so you were, you know, physicality is a big deal. Yes, but uh, locker room material I think is great for football. Okay, especially for D lines, you know, and mm -hmm. everybody's out there you're hitting people. Basketball, there's so much execution and finesse mm -hmm. uh, that that's required. Sometimes I think uh, getting a basketball team fired up can can be a detriment at times. So, what are your thoughts on that? Did you get when you got fired up and pissed off? Did it help mm -hmm. you as a player? Oh, it definitely helped me. I mean, I can remember. Many times walking in the locker room, either right before the game because I had just read something or heard something that one of the other guys and the other team said or whatever. And then it's like, man, and you just start cursing. It's like, man, let's go. Because right. there's, there's times you get in, you know, not necessarily this time of year, but you get into the end of January, beginning of February, where you're kind of hitting the, you know, kind of hitting the wall. Where it's like, oh, man, yeah. you know, we got a lot of games. We're, you know, we're in the, you know, we're in Purdue right now on a Tuesday night and it's minus five degrees. And it's like, this, this is tough. And then all of a sudden, you get that little extra incentive and it's like, it just, it just helps you get through that, that mental, the mental hurdle of preparing for the game. And that's why I think, you know, locker room stuff is always a, it's a dangerous thing for the other team to say, you know, you never want to come out and say, Oh man, that dude livers can't shoot. You don't want, you right. don't want to say things like that because then he's going to come out and shoot 60% from three. You know, you never want to give the other team any type of incentive that might give them just a little bit of an edge over you. So I, you know, when I was playing, Media talked to me. I was complimentary. I was nice with a couple of very rare exceptions, but that was talking about my own coach, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, so mm -hmm. locker room stuff is a big thing with college basketball. There's no doubt about that. 
Right. Well, I think it's good for 50-50 balls, okay? 50-50 balls can be, you know, incentive, you know, that incentive. And also late in the game. Man, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody says, oh, yeah, once the game starts. But I'm telling you what, you're, when you're down the stretch and, and you're gassing down, and this is going to – I'm sorry. It's still, I still think this is going to be a – I think this is going to be a, a tough game. Um, I, I think Michigan's going to win. Yeah. But, I mean, I, you know, Kofi Colbert, you know, that's – you know, when he's when he's – Doing the things he he looks like Shaq out there at moments, you know, he's, or you know, or Akeem mm -hmm. Elijah one. Um, yeah. But I, you know, I, I think Michigan's going to win, but it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. And and you know, so I, you know, I, I'm 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 nervous about it, but I'm I'm nervous about every game. So I mean, that's yeah. just, that's you know, that's being a fanboy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Have to think, I was I was much more nervous about the Indiana game than yeah, I you am were. Yeah. Oh, I, really, oh, really? I really because that's that trap game. That's that's the one that's tough to get up for. This game, I mean, it's a top five matchup. You know, you win it, you win a championship. You hang a banner. It's it's a there's there's a lot of incentive to go out there and be focused and be dialed in and be ready. So well, I, I don't know if there's going to be any concern about how they're going to come out. It's just a matter well, of you know getting down the stretch if they can if they can maintain because you know it's going to be a five to seven point game either way coming up. I don't I don't see a blowout happening at all. Okay, so uh, and what I like about it beating Illinois. Uh, then all of a sudden you have a four game lead in the loss column. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have, I mean, if, if he wants to play, you know, if Brett Underwood wants to play this card or why didn't Michigan play the other three games? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's go Northwestern on the road, uh, yeah. Indiana at home, Penn state on the road. Yep. The way Michigan's playing right now, those are freaking layup wins layups. Yep. Yes. So you want to go that, then you won't have anything to bitch about because you won't have any, any card to play then. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think he's making a huge mistake myself, but if he beats Michigan, you know, tomorrow, you know, tomorrow night, you, you just don't want that to happen because he, then he'll have leverage. Yeah. He well, definitely that, will. And he's got something to, to hang his hat on that. You know, look, we played these games, we're ready, we're prepared. And you know, then, then there's, then there's that aspect to it. You know, right. like you said, I think those three games are, had we played them, we'd be sitting at 16 and one. And who yeah. ever thought at this point of the year we'd be 16 and one or let alone 13 and yeah. one in the Big Ten? I mean, that's just those, those aren't incredibly challenging games. Now, the issue is possibly injuries or just fatigue from the travel and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, they, they were off 23 days and they came back and didn't miss a beat. Where other teams, in the country, other teams in the country have not been able to do that. And then their coaches are complaining right. about their time off and all this kind of stuff and didn't affect Michigan at all. So, yeah. I don't, it affected I don't, Baylor. I don't, I don't, it affected. I don't know why he's opening his mouth about the other team. Just affected, worry about your team. Yeah. yeah, Baylor comes off their break. They 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 didn't look good. I mean, yeah, it's affected every team. But Michigan couldn't practice. They couldn't no. practice. They couldn't even you know get together. So yep. I mean, that's that element. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but um, those are important games. Talking about Thursday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you uh, would you take a split? No, if you're not at this point. You want to sweep? I, I want to sweep. Okay, yeah. what? Let yeah, me I, ask. I, I, think tomorrow, I think tomorrow Michigan's got a big advantage because it's at home. Not that there's a home court, but it's just the the familiarity of being at home and you know knowing the rims and the whole thing. So I think it's probably 60-40 that Michigan wins tomorrow night. But the okay. next two games, from what I saw from Michigan State yesterday, I think it's a sweep. I was okay. I was legitimately concerned of what Michigan State was doing last week. Well, I know, but think about that last week. But think about yeah. that that last week and come back into this week. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, I mean, they, they showed me yesterday what their true colors are. They should, they absolutely showed me what type of team they really are. They they have the ability to step up, but also if you come out and punch them in the mouth from the first play, they're going to fold, and they're going to show no heart. They're not they're not the typical Michigan State teams from years past. But have, and they and they went early in the shot clock. I mean, I, I went back to that Minnesota game and dissected how Michigan lost that game, mm -hmm. and also how they played bad in the first half of the Wisconsin game. Yep. And what it was was uh, not only I mean their defense what you know uh, wasn't up to par, but they they fired they they went one on. I mean they tried to all these kids tried to make something happen, and they yep. were firing that ball early in the shot clock, almost yep. within ten seconds. There, mm -hmm. I looked at that game. I watched it a second time. There was a, a, a succession of multiple trips down the court where that they weren't even going 15 seconds into the shot clock. They yep. panicked. They got mm -hmm. behind. Since that time, they haven't done that. Since yeah. that time, they haven't lost. Yeah. But again, with the, the Minnesota game, 
they also had 16 or 18 turnovers, which they haven't been anywhere yeah, near. That's true. You know, they haven't yeah. been any, they've been averaging 10 to 11 since then. So, you know, those extra five trips and, you know, as ugly as they played against Minnesota, they still had a chance to win. It just They just needed like one or two plays to kind of go their way and to get a couple yeah. stops and they were in that game. But they just couldn't yeah. get over the hump because every time they got close, they kicked the ball out of bounds or did something, offensive foul or something stupid yeah. that just took them out of that that rhythm and that momentum. So, you know, I, I don't want to say we could or should be undefeated because I think it, it was good for us that we lost when we did, but I, I don't see Michigan State beating us. I, I think that I think we match up very well with them and they match up terribly with us. So, you know, it, it's a, all going to be a matter of how we come off the game tomorrow, win or loss. You know, because we yeah. have four hours and we're throwing it up again. So, you know, what what are we going to be able to do? How are we going to be able to change gears and focus on an in-state rival and and all that? I mean, I mean, some in some elements, I'm 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 almost like more worried about the Chrysler game on uh, third because of coming off the Illinois game, mm -hmm. um, and because then if you drop that one, then you got to then you got to win in East Lansing, um, you know, to secure this but like, thing. But you know how it is normally in. It, for a game like that, end of the season where they're, you know, Michigan State's potentially playing for a Big Ten regular season. Yeah. You know, the students are camping out and the whole thing and it's nuts. There's nobody there. They're, they're, yeah, that's true. The idea of a home court <laughs> advantage, it, it's, yeah. it's gone this year with the exception of, you know, just the familiarity of sleeping in your own bed. Yeah. So, true. you know, it, it really, it, you know, being, you know, being down in Ann Arbor or being up here, it really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. And, and Michigan's a better team, so oh, I think by far Michigan's the better. a better team, better all around and, team. And with you know Michigan State winning those games last week, you know yes they want to beat Michigan, they want to show something, but it's not as crucial for them. You know they they yeah. put themselves in a decent enough position with those two wins last week that they don't have to win those games in order to get to five hundred, in order to you know not have to win the Big Ten tournament to get to the postseason. So it's it's kind of a whole snowball thing that they're dealing with too. If they beat Indiana, my opinion, Chris, Michigan State will be in, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they win one in Indianapolis at the Big Ten tournament. And if, yep. and if they comp and if they compete with Michigan, they don't have to beat Michigan. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm you know not that the committee is looking at you know the horseshoe aspect of it, but still, yeah. I think that's going to come into play. And oh, they're absolutely. Michigan State, and yep. I still think. That that's uh, you know people will you know deny will say that's not true. I mm -hmm. think subliminally it's there mm -hmm. um, to get one of those blue bloods or green bloods back in there because there's going to be missing this year. And absolutely, that's, yeah, no, that, that's absolutely right. They they beat Indiana, and they don't get just you know dump trucked by us twice. Then they go to the yeah. Big Ten tournament and they get one win. I, they're I, in. Yeah. I think they're in for sure, especially with what they did last week. I, I keep on going back to that, but those were such big important wins for them. Now, if they, you know, get rolled by Indiana or lose by Indiana and then lose by 25 even to us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe win the Big Ten tournament, they still might not get invited. Yeah. No, that's you true. Know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think Indiana is – tell you what, Chris. I think – I think Indiana's checked out. I think they, I, I think they're, I think they're at the baggage. You know, they're they're at the hotel. They're checking yeah, out. You know, they're already thinking about the off season and who's transferring and all. And, who, that. and who's going to be? And maybe Archie Miller might not even be coached, but the the yep. buyout down there is crazy. astronomical. It's crazy. And I don't think that it's athletic no, they, department it, can afford it. Yeah, but they'll find someone. You know, it's it's the same thing everywhere. You know, all the all the coaches now and all the major sports have these huge monster buyouts, and if yeah. they want him gone, he'll be gone. You know, that's just, yeah. that's how the world is now. So the coaches just do that to protect themselves. So, right. but I, I was, I was thoroughly unimpressed with a lot of guys on Indiana's team. They just look like out there just, eh, we're running up a down. We got the Jersey on and, yeah. you know, it, it just, they didn't have that, that fire, you know, especially that last seven or eight minutes. Oh. Indiana looked like, I, I mean, it, I was looking, I was checking it out. They want this game to be over with. <laughs> yes. Yep. And that's what Archie Miller well, talked about. You know, they, they know. You know, they played Saturday afternoon. They know they might be getting Saturday off. They might be coming back into practice Saturday night and get their teeth kicked into practice. They're getting their butts yeah. kicked yesterday yeah. at practice, and then they got to get ready to play again. So yeah. they already knew. They were, I, trust me, I've been in that situation before. I've been down <laughs> with the team and stuff like that, and it's like, you're looking up. It's like, man, we are down 15, and we've got 40 damn points in this game. Like, we're not right. going to win this. We're not coming back. Like, let's just, you know, keep playing, but let's, yeah. let's move on, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, CY, an outstanding job as always. Uh, we'll, we'll, we're probably going to be do, doubling down on some of these broadcasts. Oh, yeah. We've got so many rapid-fire games, so many crucial games mm -hmm. here as we uh, close out the Big Ten season for the Michigan Wolverines and Big Ten tournament next week. So, uh, get you, I love your, in, your insight as a former player, and we have a lot of fun with this, and uh, we'll talk mm -hmm. to you very soon. Uh, Per your schedule, Mr. Busy Man. And we'll hey, figure hey, let's do a Wednesday and let's do it right after Michigan State on Friday. All right. Sounds good, CY. Take care. All right. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Have a good one.